these aren't these aren't these aren't storm clouds this is the that they burn off the they burn off in east palestine this is not storm clouds look at it this is over darlington The scene in and around East Palestine, Ohio is genuinely apocalyptic looking and seeing these photographs is chilling because you know that this is an ecological disaster on a massive scale still to be determined. But what makes matters worse is that it feels like residents are being gaslit and they're being told that everything is copacetic, they can return home when it's obvious that that's not actually true. So this story is genuinely disturbing, and I hope that more people pay attention to it because what we're witnessing here can happen anywhere. And it's happening in the United States, and these residents here, they're essentially powerless in this situation. So as Jake Johnson of Common Dreams explains, residents of East Palestine, Ohio, are voicing alarm and mistrust of officials after a 150-car train carrying hazardous materials, including vinyl chloride, crashed in their small town, prompting emergency evacuations and a controlled release of chemicals into the air to prevent a catastrophic explosion. Norfolk Southern, the company that owns the derailed train, has insisted that public health is not at risk, a sentiment echoed by local authorities. Just five days after the fiery crash, Top officials, including Ohio's Republican Governor Mike DeWine, effectively gave the all clear, telling residents they can safely return home. Many, lacking viable alternatives due to their limited resources and incomes, have done just that, despite lingering fears of the impacts that the train crash and subsequent unleashing of toxic gases into the atmosphere may have had on their town. Some have reported strong chemical odors and unsettling sights, such as a stream blackened by substances released from the train and dead fish. Now, to be clear, residents were told to evacuate if they lived within a one to two mile radius of the controlled explosion, and they were very quickly told to return home. But those residents are still saying they don't feel safe there, but they're being instructed to open the windows, wipe off surfaces, and it's not just residents within that area. Residents all around East Palestine and even outside of East Palestine are saying this doesn't feel right. We smell an odor. One family told the Washington Post that it smells like a combination of nail polish remover and burning tires, and it's causing headaches and nausea. And that's for good reason. It's because the burning of vinyl chloride is potentially very dangerous. Now, that's the chemical in question that a lot of people are worried about. Now, vinyl chloride is made, uh, is used to make PVC pipes and whatnot. And Long-term exposure to this can lead to a lot of health issues. It's linked to cancers such as liver cancer, but it's really toxic in particular when it's burned. As AP explains, officials warned the controlled burn would send phosgene and hydrogen chloride into the air. Phosgene is a highly toxic colorless gas with a strong odor that can cause vomiting and breathing trouble and was used as a weapon in World War I. So this was used as a weapon in World War I and residents in East Palestine are being told it's perfectly fine if they breathe this in. We don't know how long these chemicals are going to linger, how long this will actually affect them. There's a fundamental lack of transparency here that's making the situation a lot more ominous. And you don't have to be a genius to know that the situation just doesn't feel right. Jordan Sheridan of Status Quo spoke to one resident who explained that his pets are experiencing a lot of health issues. One of them even died as a result of the chemicals. You've basically been taking your animals to the vet back and forth, back and forth. Uh, I want to show an image you posted uh, of one uh, that looks pretty ill. Uh, that's one of your foxes there. Swollen face, yeah. runny eyes, coughing. Uh, another one, unfortunately, uh, passed away. Um, this is uh kieran was yeah. the fox's name um yeah, did the kieran. vet did the vet sorry by the way that's terrible um did the vet talk about what they think was it the smoke they they were inhaling uh what do they think is making them sick uh so far at the vet they've tested the blood levels and there's raised liver enzymes and the chloride levels in the blood are on the high end of normal and 
the lungs are inflamed. All of that is like in line with vinyl chloride exposure. There's um, the eye irritation and there is neurological issues going on, which is also things that can happen from the chloride, uh, vinyl chloride exposure. Um, the one that passed away, they have been talking to um, universities to make sure that they do the necropsy correctly and don't lose any of the like tissues and don't mess up any of the samples and they make everything go how it needs to go to have the information preserved um, so that in, anything that is there can be used. Um, the one, I have one fox that has come home so far from the vet and she still isn't 100%, but she's doing a lot better. And um, hopefully the other ones are all gonna make it, but one like has a lot of neurological problems and she so far is seeming like she's not gonna be herself again from everything. And I have others that also have neurological issues that just, they're not themselves at all from it. And I'm really worried. I'm sorry, but that is not normal. That is not a normal phenomenon. Now, with each passing day, it seems more and more terrible to instruct citizens to return to their homes, considering that we're still learning about what's going on there and we're still discovering more chemicals. That's the worst part. So a local ABC News affiliate reported that additional toxins have actually been identified, including ethylexyl acrylate, which is a carcinogen that causes irritation and burning when it comes into contact with the skin. And it can also cause shortness of breath when it's inhaled and also isobutylene, which can cause dizziness when inhaled. And if that wasn't already bad enough, a local Fox News affiliate reports that East Palestine residents are being warned that water may actually be at risk as well and this warning came again after they were told that it was safe to return home so now the water may be at risk they're discovering more chemicals there are reports that animals have been affected and yet nope it's okay you can return home this is not right this is not okay and the residents aren't stupid they know that it's not safe to return home but the problem is that some of them don't have a choice so one family spoke to the pittsburgh post gazette and they said that you can actually smell the chemicals through the water. Quote, it was gagging my 16-year-old niece. It was so strong, she said. Another said they want to leave, but they don't have a choice. Quote, I don't want to take my kids back to that, she said. None of us have the money to completely start over somewhere. We're not going to have a choice but to take our children back to that place, and it's not fair. So they're essentially powerless in this situation. They're powerless. They're being told that it's safe for them to return home. Just wipe down surfaces, open windows, and you'll be fine. And they know that that's not right. They can feel the way that it affects them. They can smell the chemicals, but they don't have a choice. They don't have money. Now, what should be happening is the company should foot the bill for their hotels, get them out of that area for the foreseeable future. But um, here's how they're taking responsibility. You want to know how? With a $25,000 donation to the Red Cross. Seriously, that's what Norfolk Southern decided to donate. That's their way of taking responsibility for their action here. It's almost an insult, right? The audacity of some of these corporations. Oh, you know, we're sorry that we poisoned your entire town, but here's a $25,000 donation to the Red Cross. Does that make you feel any better? It, it, what do you even say to that? What do you even say to that? Now, there is a reason why this happened, and it's because rail companies are choosing to put profits over people and the communities that they're supposed to be serving. Now, the Rail Workers Union actually released a press statement saying exactly why this took place, blaming Wall Street's motives here. The root causes of this wreck are the same ones that have been singled out repeatedly associated with the hedge fund initiated operating model known as precision scheduled railroading. But risky practices such as ever longer and heavier trains even precede PSR. The train that wrecked is a case in point, 9,300 feet long, 18,000 tons, other hallmarks of modern day railroading include deep cuts both to maintenance and operating employees, poor customer service, deferred maintenance to rolling stock and infrastructure, long working hours and chronic fatigue, limited on the job training and high employee turnover. They continue at this time, the immediate cause of the wreck appears to have been a 19th century style mechanical failure of the axle on one of the cars, an overheated bearing leading to derailment and then jackknifing tumbling cars. There is no way in the 21st century, save from a combination of incompetence and disregard for public safety that such a defect should still be threatening our communities but yet 
here we are. And at the time that I record this video, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg has still not even called for the return of an Obama era regulation that mandated the use of better breaking technology, or at least expanded the use of better breaking technology. And there's a write up about this in The Lever, which is really informative. I'll encourage you to read that. We have this really sketchy situation taking place where residents can smell the effect that these chemicals have had on their communities. They can see that things aren't right. They're being told to return home. And yet, there's not a lot of attention on this. And as if the situation wasn't already stink, News Nation reporter Evan Lambert was arrested during a press conference for Republican Governor Mike DeWine, and they claimed that he was arrested for criminal trespassing and disorderly conduct. Why? Well, because reporters were instructed to not speak during the press conference, but he was being too loud. Therefore, he was arrested. And of course, police were incredibly aggressive and brutal. And that makes the situation even more suspicious. Now, to be fair, Governor Mike DeWine says that this arrest was not uh, necessary. It was bad. He doesn't like that it happened. But still, when you have this ominous situation and you feel as if local authorities aren't giving you the full details they're not giving you all of the information that's needed to determine for yourself whether or not the situation is safe and when you have this company not taking responsibility it kind of feels like this is all this broad cover-up effort and you're being gaslit in the process and the arrest you know the silver lining at least was that it brought more attention to this particular story but either way this is not normal and it doesn't seem safe for the residents to be there. We don't know how long it's going to be unsafe, but certainly currently it doesn't seem safe. But I mean, what choice do these residents have? They don't have the money. So you can go to a different area, sleep on the streets, or you can stay home where your things are and just uh, cross your fingers and hope that the local authorities are being honest and they're not telling you to return home when it's not actually safe. But if we learned anything, especially from the Flint water crisis, it's that you can't necessarily trust what these authorities tell you. And sometimes don't just be skeptical for the sake of being skeptical. Trust your eyes, right? They saw how the water was orange and contaminated with lead and flint. And residents in East Palestine are, are seeing that this isn't over. They could smell the chemicals. The water is at risk now. And it was a bad idea for them to return home. So there needs to be accountability. And this is going to be a scandal that lasts for years because I don't even think we're going to uncover how disastrous this really was until years down the line. And just knowing currently that people are being poisoned and they're forced to stay there is genuinely sickening in the richest country on the planet. But I can't say I'm surprised because in this country, profits are prioritized over people. So this could have been avoided. It wasn't. And even after the catastrophe, people are being told that it's fine when it's very clearly not. So it's it's horrifying. But here we are.